Hi everyone and welcome back. My name is Alex with Plugin Alliance TV. In this demonstration, we're going to take an in-depth look at the BX console Focusrite. The Focusrite console was designed by Rupert Neve himself for George Martin in the mid-1980s, and only 10 consoles were manufactured worldwide. Needless to say, this is an iconic recording console, and now with Brainworks TMT console emulation, it adds to the console family of products such as the BX Console N, the BX Console SSL-G, and SSL-E. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at each one of the modules, but before we get started, let's check out this tune composed by yours truly. All right, so let's dig right in. The BX console focus right is a channel strip comprised of the input stage to the right, including the input gain, which gives you minus 10 or plus 10 of dB, the virtual gain, which accounts for the noise floor, THD, which is thermal harmonic distortion, which allows you to give you a little bit more crunch or depth for your mixes, bass mute, and TMT inside. TMT is common with the BX console family of products, including the BX console N, the BX console SSL G, and SSL E channels. To the left, you have your EQ section with two shelves the top big knob for the high shelf and the bottom for the low shelf. Then you have high mids and low mids. The filters above can be engaged or disengaged by clicking on the LED. And to the left, you have the dynamic section, including compressor, built-in de and gate. With the bottom section in yellow, built-in filters being fed into the sidechain of the dynamic section. One thing to understand about the BX console family of products is proper gain stage and how to calibrate the meters in order for you to get the best sound for your money. And for this, you're going to click on the Brainworks icon. This is going to open up this panel where you can type in the meter adjustment. Here you have two options, PPM meter reference, which is displayed here on the right, and VU meter reference. I've typed in minus 20 dB full scale for both. So what that means is that when I'm feeding a sign generator set to 1K at minus 20 dB, it's going to correspond metering here set to VU. For example, if I crank this from minus 20 and give it a 2 dB boost, you're going to see that displayed here on the meters. So let's go back to minus 20 and we'll have that as our calibration setting. Another thing you'll notice is that you can switch the meters from input to output. So the output would be affected by the volume slider here. Go ahead and mute that. Also, if the signal is too hot, Let's say we crank up the gain on the compressor. Then you're going to see the overload LED light up. And this is typical for analog consoles. You have limited range of headroom. The BX console focus right is no exception. However, that distortion is desirable. And I'll show you guys a real cool trick with a bass later. All right. So let's get out of here and go to our session. All right. So in our session, let's take a look first at our drums. And our drums are comprised of mostly kick and percussive elements. Let's check it out. We'll check our input meters. And we'll switch this back to output. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to enhance the low end. I feel that the low end could use a little bit of push, and for that we're going to use the low shelf. And it's either going to be 56 hertz or 33 hertz, which is extremely low. So let's check that out. We'll go with 56 for now. We're also going to boost up our highs. 
set to 10K so we can get a little bit more crispiness from the snaps and from the percussive elements which come in here on the hook. Let's check it out. Bypass our EQ. So a little bit goes a long way. This is just great. However, since we're boosting so much lows on the low shelf, we're getting a little bit of clutter on the low mids. So we're going to address that with the low mid frequency right here. We're going to dial this somewhere between 150 and 200 and pull that back down. Check it out. We can disengage each band or disengage the entire EQ section. Finally, we can apply a filter set to high pass filter, which is currently set to 20 hertz. We can click on this times three button and it's going to switch it from 20 to 60. And that also works on the other bands right here on the high mids and on the low mids. So if I see this frequency set to 6.7 or 2.2, so you do the math. Okay, great. Now that we have our EQ in place, let's feed this into the compressor. And the signal flow for this channel strip can be that the EQ happens after the compression or before the compression. And that's displayed here on the EQ post button. In its current default state, the EQ happens after compression. Disengage this, the EQ happens before compression. And this is what we want because we want to boost up the highs and the lows. We want to clean up the low mids. In this section, you have parameters that are common to compressors such as threshold, release, attack, ratio and gain, but you also have an extra feature found on the BX consoles, which is the mix knob. And this allows you to dial back some of the dry process. Likewise, you'll notice under the blue panel that you have a built-in de -ester, and this comes in handy, especially with dealing with sibilance or cymbals on a drum kit. All right, we'll use the low ratio, uh, adjust our threshold and watch our dB meters, which is right here and get no more than four to six dB of gain reduction. Check it out. I like what the compressor is doing is making the drum sound nice and tight. However, we're losing some of that low end that we worked very hard to achieve. So for that, we're going to use the low cut filter fed into the side chain of the compressor. If you want to hear what that sounds like, just click on this button three times until it says audio. And now you can hear the filter. We're going to set it somewhere around 80 and now assign it to the compressor. Check it out. This is the entire channel strip bypassed. And lastly, let's apply some THD. This is going to be built in saturation harmonic distortion. When you crank this up to the right, it's going to crunch your signal based on the frequency response. And we dial it to the left. It's going to open it up more, giving you more headroom internally. So let's check it out and see which setting we like the best. Okay, now that we have our drums in place, let's check that out with the mix and we'll bypass the plugin on and off. Here we go. For this next example, we've taken the bass track, which was printed from a VST synth, and we've duplicated it so that we can have a clean version for the sub lows and a distorted version for the tone. So we've duplicated the track and we're using a technique where we're saturating the signal into the BX console and then trimming it back down with the trim plugin. 
And the reason for that is that we are boosting the gain, we're boosting the fader, and we're achieving overload internally on the channel strip. So this is what this channel sounds like by itself. So if you combine this with the non-saturated track, which is this one right here, you get this type of result. Before and after. So it's a really cool trick that also works on kick drums. In fact, I've done it right here where the kick is duplicated and apply the same type of processing. All right, lastly, we're gonna take a look at the guitars because the guitars are really one of my favorite instruments in this composition. And it's just comprised of a triad chord played on the high register of the guitar. It sounds like this. Very nice, that's a Fender Strat going through a pedal board. And here we're not doing much, but I wanna show you what the high mids can do. So what we're doing here is we're cutting all the frequencies above a 4.2 and everything below 162. So we're really narrowing the frequency range of our guitars to be more focused sounding. Likewise, we're compressing it after EQ in order to keep it in place. So let's check it out, the before and after. Furthermore, we can boost some of the high mid so that it can cut through nice and clear on speaker. So let's do that in context. We'll use the high mid module and aim somewhere around 2K, 3K or 4K for that sweet spot. Check it out. And for kicks and giggles, I want to show you guys what the entire mix sounds like bypass without the focus right console. So when this is blue, that means that all the focus right consoles are bypassed. And when it's gray, that means that they are engaged. Check it out. I hope you guys enjoy the mix. Don't forget to download a fully functional 14-day trial version of the BX console Focusrite from PluginAlliance.com. My name is Alex. Leave your comments below. I look forward to reading them. I'll see you guys again real soon. Adios.